The big changes here, as you would expect, uh, the storm has been very well behaved in terms of its track. Now, its intensity has fluctuated up and down. And even though we're at hurricane status in the last hour or so, we've seen some weakening of the storm. That's a satellite picture there. Look at the dark bur uh, the burgundy here representing the more intense thunderstorms. But then they kind of faded really quickly here in the last half hour. That is some good news as the storm tracks closer to the coast. And the 11 o'clock advisory is showing those winds at 75 miles an hour, just five miles an hour higher than they were here at five o'clock. So the, the, the change in the headlines, big news, but the actual strength of the storm hasn't changed all that. It's still moving north at around 14 miles an hour. This is curious to watch though. The red here represent where tropical storm warnings are in effect. These are for locations that are likely to see sustained winds 40 miles an hour or greater for at least a short period of time. But it's really going to be dependent on the, the, the track itself and how that takes place. And that track, as you'll see here, is just to the west of Jacksonville. We're really no longer in the cone for the core to go through us. The core of the storm is where the worst of it will ultimately end up being. And that core is again, again, stay basically to the west of Jacksonville as it goes out there towards I-75 and then off towards Waycross. We're on the eastern side of this storm. That is the latest track from the Hurricane Center, which is west of where it was earlier on. In terms of the impacts here locally in Jacksonville and around the area, we still potentially could see another two to five inches of rain. It's not going to be in every backyard because the core is going to stay west of us in Jacksonville. We'll get to squally rains, which will lead to gusty winds, and that means power outages will be a possibility. Here are the latest forecast models in terms of wind speeds. Two o'clock in the morning, look at Tampa Bay. We're talking about gusts up to 46 miles an hour. Remember, the storm's still off the coast. They're not even getting the core of it. And then it travels out there towards Gainesville by 11 o'clock in the morning. We'll get a combination of onshore winds from the storm circulation. That means we'll get a pretty strong funneling winds in the Neptune, Jacksonville, Ponte Vedra Beach. There could be gusts of wind with the squalls of rain as it comes on shore. That'll lead to some power outage, power outage possibilities there. But the core of the storm, notice it's west of Gainesville, and that core is where the worst of the winds and the rains will be. Look, even at 8 o'clock tomorrow night, we're looking at 50 mile an hour winds along the coast in Georgia. That's where they have tropical storm warnings in effect. Here's where the rainfall forecast, this just updated, if you can see the numbers here, drier, a uh, lot so, more so along the beaches, and then it will be inland. This is the track of the core, and I'm going to wrap it up here because I have more things to say, but we got to get you more information, and so it goes. I'll have a lot more to say in about 10 minutes' time. Joy? All right, John.